Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, I just wanted to clarify um, a few things from the previous video there about the Nano Swinsid and the chip select fix. Um, now, if you watch my original uh, Swinsid review video there, there were issues with Last Ninja, um, R Type, and Alien. You know, the sound was breaking up quite a bit. Um, now, at the time, I didn't really, you know, I just thought it was something, you know, something to do with this microcontroller firmware on here, just a, you know, a deficiency, a bug, etc., in the way it had been developed. Um, in that previous video, as you see there, I suggested putting a cap um, solve the problem. Now, I have to clarify, that is not actually the case. You do need a cap in certain circumstances, and that, that's what I want to start about, start off by you know, covering here. Um, the classroom clarification on the cap, cap issue. Now, if you've got a MOS PLA, which I've got in there now, um, and you use one of these v Swinsid V2 boards, and I'll show you. So let me just zoom in a little bit on this, uh, if I can, let me find it. Th these, are, these are some new ones I've just purchased, and these do not need a cap um, when you're using Dave's um, dual SID board here. So that's the first sort of clarification, if you like. I'm going to say clarification an awful through this video. I'm sure I am. Um, so that's the first point, you know, there. Um, the this Nano Swins that I originally received here, uh, you can see it's a different one. This is one of the ones that's been produced by Sinshai. Um, I think it's a German website. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, yeah, I think it is. I think it's sinshai.de is their website. If you've got one of those, it seems you need the 10 picofarad cap there, um, you know, from pin 8 to ground, you know, from chip select. So, in terms of my last video, yeah, when you've got th that, that nano swing set in here, without that 10 picofarad cap, you get issues. Now, it may well be that this needs a cap as well. Um, so, maybe I'm not clarifying very much here, but all, all I know is I've just tested it with the diagnostic stuff and there's no issues um, from the sound whereas with this one without a cap you get sound issues so you do need it, it, probably a cap if you're getting any issues with the Nano Swinsid um, start with a 10 picofarad cap just see if that rules your problems out um, you might be able to go lower than that like you know I said earlier in the earlier video 4.7 or a 2.2 or something like that um, so there is to a degree a level of uh, experimentation required there to get that just right but the, the, the fix in general doesn't really apply in the sense that, you know, if you, if you run this Swinsid on its own, you still get the issue. You might be wondering why that is, and I certainly was last night, because um, that was one of the things that sort of led me onto this video, really, um, and my update of the original title of the video, saying it's only a partial fix, because it, it is. Um, it, the, the fix actually depends on Dave's dual SID board, um, you know, or something, you know, the, any of the SID board that's got, um, you know, some separation there between the, ch or some control between the chip selects in order to disable the second SID when the first SID is being read. Um, and that is where the, the solution lies, really. It's, it's quite a strange, you know, series of events, again, that's led towards this, you know, me finding out that these nano swin SIDs can sound flawless. Um, and actually it's pointed out where the deficiency is in the Nano Swin SID. Um, what happens is when the when you've got this dual SID board um, like this, or, or, or you know, my original one we're using the two you know the two diodes there, it works just the same way. Um, when the first SID has been read, the second SID is disabled. Um, and then the first SID is obviously writing to the data bus, it's outputting whatever has been requested, you know, whichever reg register has been uh, requested to, to be, be read, you know, it's outputting that to the data bus. Um, and, you know, the SID 2 is doing nothing. And if you think about it, you know, that should start to make sense now, uh, and it should point towards the deficiency here in the, the, the SWIN SID. What's actually happening is, you know, if you've not got the if you've not got the dual SID and you've just got the nano swin SID in there, when it when you come to do it when uh, it comes to do a read of certain registers, I don't think the swin SID is responding with anything. Um, it could well be it tries to respond, but it's inaccurate in terms of the emulation. There, I actually suspect it's not responding with anything because I do know uh, from one of the things I read is that the nano swin SID um, and the swin SIDs in general, I think some of the you know the other versions of these don't have um, don't support paddles. You know the pot X and pot Y. There's just no capability there. Um, you know it doesn't respond at all to reads, and I think that holds true of the other registers in there as well. I don't think you can read these at all. Um, and in some games, the way the sound has been developed, 
I think you know to get certain sound effects and things, they're sort of setting certain registers to start certain frequencies, you know, playing on the certain channels and things, and then at various points as the playback is occurring, reads are taking place in order to see the current state of those registers in order to adjust them to get specific sounds. If that makes sense, if that sort of makes sense, do you, do you see what I mean? It's almost like if you, you know, you've got a waveform and it's like you've got like a decay and it's just coming down. The red, there's a registered read taking place, and if it's at a certain point, it's adjusting it to get the waveform back up. You know, I think that's what's going on. There's some compensation, you know, some automatic, um, you know, some code there um, in order to modulate, if you like, or change the, the sample. You're not really the sample, but the, the 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 way that channel has been controlled to get specific sounds. I think that's what's going on. Um, in R Type and Last Ninja and in Alien, um, it seems to make sense to me because the sounds in those particular games, I can there's a, a, a sort of a commonality between them. Um, you know, some of the sounds that are affected. So I think that's what's going on. Um, so in summary, if you, you you know you run a Nano Swin Sid on its own, you're going to have that issue. You can't get around it. Even with a capacitor on that, that is not going to fix your issue. But on a dual Sid board, with a, a, a potentially because I do think, you know, I say potentially, you may or may not need a capacitor, like I say, it depends on the revision of the, 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 the twin SIDs you've got here. Um, but yeah, anything from sort of 2.2 .2 to 10 peak for its cap on the chip select pin should solve the issue if you've got an issue. If you don't have an issue, um, you're not going to have any issues at all when it's in slot 2. It will sound perfect. Um, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. What I'll do is I'll play Alien um, with both SIDs connected, but I'll, I'll just play the Nano, you know, I'll connect the Nano up to the TV so you can hear the Nano, and here it's absolutely perfect. And then we'll remove the first SID, this is a crusty SID by the way, a uh, test SID I've been using, but we'll remove this first SID, and you'll, you'll be able to hear then that SID 2 suddenly is back to its original problem. Um, and that, to me, is strong evidence there that it is a problem, you know, with, let's say, the fact that this can't respond to reads. Um, I did think about it a fair bit and think, you know, is it just a case of the uh, data bus is floating when this is in a read mode or when it's disabled? But I don't think that's the case. Um, could be wrong, you know, maybe there's an element of um, investigation still required there. It may well be possible to do a mod. where you have some pull downs or something on the data bus um, remove that first SID and retest it and see what happens I don't know um, but the interesting thing is um, it's still in the second slot when I remove this one you still leave this in the second slot the disable is still occurring if you see what I mean you know it's still got the chip select disable to disable SID 2 when it's being read and then you still get the you know the weird sound issue um, so it's not that it's not being disabled you know the chips like disabling it when it's in a, re a read mode is not part of the problem there so it's not that but it could well be that the data bus is floating um, or something along those lines I don't know but anyway I'll connect it all up now and uh, I'll show you right so here we are I've just got the nano connected and it's in slot 2 and obviously I've still got the MOS 6581 in slot 1 So there you can see I've removed the 6581, uh, to put you back to the TV, so we've just got the Nano on its own now, and this is where the problems will re-materialise. There you go, that sounds exactly the same way, um, I'll just turn it down a bit. It's exactly the same as when I demonstrated this in my uh, you know, initial review of the Nano Swinson. So I guess that that would actually confirm that um, you know, it's related to the read capability. You can't, you, know, you can't read from this at all. And certain games, um, probably not very many, um, you might not be able to pick up on it on all games that make use of that read facility where it's trying to read registers. Um, but yeah, you know, the ones that um, do have an issue obviously are going to be affected by that. Um, 
So I don't know. It's you know, again, it's, I'm retracting my comment from the previous video. Really, that I, I come back to the mere first point that yeah, then I know it's not quite right. Um, but I guess there's a workaround in the sense that this is ideally suited to a dual SID board. You know, if you want to get a dual SID, these are quite cheap. They work out about ten pounds each or something. I think I bought two of these online for about approximately ten pounds with two or three pounds shipping, which um, ain't bad really. I think it was like twenty three pounds shipped for two um, so it might be a good opportunity to you know get one of those use it as a second SID in a dual SID board like this get one of these boards from Dave um, it's yeah it's a, it's a good way to use it and um, moving forward um, what could we do about it well if the firmware for this was open source we could actually have a tinker and see if we can do anything in terms of simulating the read there uh, I don't know whether there's going to be enough capability left within that uh, microcontroller to accommodate you know maybe the uh, like code wise or performance you know CPU wise I don't know I know it's overclocked to 32 megahertz it's uh, an at mega 88 uh, I forget the uh, suffix on there but it's an at mega 88 effectively um, but those have been knocking around for a few years now I wouldn't be surprised if you can get a slightly higher um, clock speed or you know a higher performance chip in the same sort of package or something similar so maybe a revision could be done to that I don't know um, moving forward I'm pretty sure Swinkles is going to re revisit this anyway with newer technology uh, I do know there's also an FPGA SID project in the works at the moment and that's nearing completion so that would be a really good candidate for replacement SID as well um, it's just a shame that the, the, it looks like you know uh, contrary to my previous video it looks like there isn't a fix for this to use it on its own you know uh, unless you just put up with the way this sounds um, on these you know the few games that do have an issue for the most part it sounds pretty good so the other thing worth pointing out here and this is something Dave suggested in his uh, blog actually when he was prototyping this board is you can make use of faulty SIDs in these you know in a dual SID board like this quite nicely um, and actually this it's a two sort of two pronged attack that the two ways you could use it you could in theory if you just want a single SID but you said your current SID you've got has got an issue maybe it's got a sound channel missing maybe the filters are faulty but you don't want dual SID what you could do is get one of these boards from Dave plug it in plug your original faulty SID in like this one is here and this has got a missing channel and then stick a nano SID in there and just route the audio outputs from the pin header here you know connect it to, to the motherboard where the, the audio output pin normally goes to the, the socket there um, and you've got kind of you know you'd be using the nano swin SID which generates perfect sound when there's a you know a semi-functional SID in here as long as this SID can be read it doesn't matter how it sounds um, generally, uh, as long as there's nothing wrong with any of the registers on there, um, it will work. And you, you know, you've got a functioning system again. You've got the best of both worlds. And if your Potex and Pot Wire working on your SID, your first SID, you know, you you you, you fault it one with the sound glitches and things, you know, a, a missing channel, etc. Then you've got a completely functional um, replacement SID. So you don't necessarily need one of the, to use one of these dual SID boards as a dual SID board. You could use it just to get a Nano Swin SID working with, uh, you know, a partially faulty SID. Um, and the thing, the, the way Dave was uh, suggesting to use these, actually, is in, you know, is the fact when you've got a missing channel, it can sound quite good. Um, now this one, it, although it say it's got a missing channel, it, it seems to be there some of the time. It seems to be um, like a setting layered thing or a filter layered thing. I don't know. Um, when you play certain sounds and things through it, they sound really granular. Uh, uh, you're grumbly, really grumbly. It's like the, I don't know whether there's something gone a bit wrong with the filter, but it sounds like really, really grumbly compared to a normal six. 581 um, but uh, you know and I, I planned on you know just not using this for anything but testing but when used in comparison with a nano uh, in com uh, combined with a nano swin SID here it sounds awesome it really does the stereo is, is even better certain instruments now instead of both SIDs trying to do a certain sound at the same time they're not because this one fails to do certain sounds where the other one picks it up big time um, so there's that you know that's worth thinking about as well that you can make use of old sort of partially faulty SIDs um, I think Dave was also saying one of his has got a problem with the pot X and pot Y that would be a good candidate to stick in the second slot because obviously that's not used in the second slot the pot X and pot Y so these boards are quite useful there for making use of some of these old uh, SIDs that are just a bit crusty not working correctly etc um, and you like I say you could use one to fix um, well not really fix but get the sound of a nano swin SID sounding really well in a single SID system if that's what you want 
Um, anyway, I thought you'd find those a few things there interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.